Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of HairTube and we're here today with the beautiful Matilda. Hello. You guys already know Matilda <laughs> and to the left of Matilda is the lovely Brooke. Hello. Um, Brooke and I are collaborating today so I'm going to do a haircut on Matilda and then Brooke's going to style it. She's going to go through um, some styling techniques that she likes to do on the particular length hair that I'm going to cut on Matilda. So collaboration is something I really believe in. Uh, Brooke's come from the Gold Coast, about two hours on a plane. Um, she's been hanging out with me the last couple of days. So if you would like to collaborate with me like Brooke is today, um, make sure you leave a comment in the bottom of this video and we might, um, maybe even if you're on the other side of the world, we might find a way to get you here, maybe fly you over or something, that'll be fun. So let's have a chat about what we're going to do with Matilda's hair. Um, so she's given me a pretty sort of strict brief about her length. She wants to do it in her sort of collarbone area and she just feels like that maybe she should have some shape around the front. We spoke about doing a quite a short curtain bang um, and then we sort of uh, had a bit of a chat about you know the consequences of that in terms of growing it out and where that might put her in six weeks time. So we're gonna start a little bit longer, see how she likes it and um, maybe next time we can do a bit shorter. So with the styling? We're yeah, yeah, let's talk about styling. Yeah, so we'll be doing some soft curls. Um, just something to um, soft just around the face. She used to bring out her um, cheekbones. Uh, she's got some beautiful cheeks. All right, so um, I'm going to continue on with the, the last couple of videos I did in terms of dry cutting. So you guys will get to see me pre-dry the hair and then um, cut it, style it by Brooke, and then we'll see the finished result. Awesome. So we're going to get started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Matilda's back from Basin. We're gonna uh, start pre drying it now. So. I wanna write one of those cheesy songs. Wanna tell you how I feel for you all. I might be not a type of guy that'll make you glow. But I promise you, I'll give you all my love And I might blame you for things you don't do Stop breaking things around But don't let go, don't let go You're the only one who can save my soul And I might blame you for things you don't do Stop breaking things around Watch me breathe until I die. All right, so hair's dry, which is really important for many reasons. Is um, with the whole philosophy behind dry cutting is to allow us to identify uh, any elements in the hair that could possibly be problematic, and when the hair's wet, we miss like things like cowlicks. You can see Matilda's got quite a strong hairline, so being able to do. Um, Dry cutting is a big advantage when it, when it comes to that, especially if you were to say, stretch this down when it's wet, cut it and you say, look, we want it around the jawline, and then you dry it and it ends up springing up to a lip, so you'll be like, oh, it's too short. So there's a few reasons for, um, for me cutting the hair dry, I guess that's one of them. The other thing is, I, I, I think I have better control when I'm cutting the hair. All right, so we're gonna start in the, in the back. Spin me to it around so you guys can see. Um, you would have noticed that I dried off uh, Matilda's hair using uh, the Glam Palm hair dryer and paddle brush, um, both of which you can purchase at adamchacha.com. Um, they're really good, they're st stupidly good day for money. Those of you who are in the US, um, you can also uh, make sure that you buy a US compliant one um, just by following the link in the store. You can buy all those US products and you just have to use um, the code ADAM15, that'll sort all that out for you. So we're doing it at Bob, yeah? What? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, just kidding, all good. <laughs> nice and still. The 
The other thing that I like about um, cutting hair dry is it allows me to better gauge um, the texture of the hair, you know, um, everything is, well there, are, I guess if I can, I guess the best way to say it is a lot of things can go missed uh, or unseen or unnoticed I guess if you're doing it wet to dry all the time. Um, I do um, cut hair wet um, but when I do that it's usually when I'm taking considerable amounts of length off or I'm like doing a particular type of haircut or we're doing a really big restyle. But when I'm doing editorial long haircuts like this um, or mid-length haircuts like Matilda's is going to be, I, um, I love to do a dry. You can just really get the ends nice and strong, super accurate way of cutting the hair. Chin down just a little bit gorgeous, perfect, thank you. Um, sometimes you would have seen me do this with clippers. Um, if you want to use clippers you can. Shout out to the family at Excellent Edges, supplier of my amazing blades. You guys are always keeping things sharp, pardon the pun. Um, also, you can grab all that gear on my website as well. It's so important for a good result to have a really sharp blade, especially if we're working on making ends look really strong, adding texture or cutting with any you know, serious accuracy, it's really important that you have um, really good um, scissors. There are many um, that I've tried and the ones that I've um, chosen to use over the overwhelming majority of my career are the Excellent Edges ones because I think they're just, um, I like supporting Australian, Australian companies and it's a very, very high quality scissor. So the one that I'm using at the moment is the Edges Premium in six inch, which is uh, the scissor that I, I use most commonly. You can see Matilda's actually got quite a lot of hair, even though it's foreign. You can see they make really light work of even cutting through quite a large section, which I think is important when we're working commercially, we need to make sure that we're working uh, efficiently, not fast, but efficient. Don't want to compromise the result, but at the same time it has to be done in a commercially viable time so we can um, make it financially viable for our businesses. Otherwise, what's the point? This is uh, Matilda's second appearance on HairTube. Are you less nervous this time? Yeah, I think so. You well, shouldn't be getting, nervous. I'm getting a lot shorter hair, so I'm very excited. I wonder if this will be the shortest your hair's ever been. Yeah. Hopefully it inspires you to wear it even a little bit shorter next time. Yeah. Summer's so. coming, so why not, huh?
que isso vai for melhor. Então, isso. Thank you. So I turn Matilda's head to the side, just using my guideline from the back, split the head in the middle, just make sure her chin's up. Mm -hmm. And we'll just make sure that this is sort of flat because we're gonna need to cut on here. You gentlemen out there who are using this technique, if you do not know the person well, you need to make sure that you're asking or actually explaining what you're doing because we're actually working in an area on a woman's body that um, can make her feel very vulnerable and if you um, are unfamiliar with them or they've never had your hair, their hair cut this way before, when you're working here, you need to ask, especially if it's even longer, and it's down here, you're working on their chest. You don't want to get yourself in, in uh, an uncomfortable situation because you've rested your comb on their chest and it's made them feel uncomfortable or your hands around there. So it's really important to ask for permission. Girls can often just get away with it, but us lads, we've got to ask. But Matilda's not my little sister, so it's fine. <laughs> I like to cut the sides this way because it um, means that I don't have to have a, the shoulder as an obstacle. Just want to make sure that you're not um, um, leaving hair stuck behind the ear when you're doing this. And make sure you comb the hair out from behind the ear as well. It's a really important part of this. So I'll just bring it this way. And if you could look out the window, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Just be careful when you're working with your scissor underneath too. Um, I haven't um, done it myself, but I know people have unfortunately jabbed their clients in the neck with their scissor. <laughs> so they want to make sure that that doesn't happen. That's looking really nice. Just check, make sure it's balanced. Brilliant. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the front of the haircut. Sure you guys can see this. Um, we're going to take a quite a deep triangle section. You can go as deep as you like, but I would be very hesitant on going too wide because what ends up happening is you can make people's faces look broad. So if you just pick this up and I'll get you just a Tilt your head forward for you until mm -hmm. so they can see. You can see the section there. 
were taken, head up like we spoke about maybe doing a little bit of shape. So we're going to start longer, and then if Matilda likes it, we can slowly um, make it shorter, but we're going to aim for just right on the lips or thereabouts. Spin you guys around this way so you can actually see the angle also. back. Should be able to see where about that'll fall. Yeah, I think that's cute. Exactly how we set up it look. You can see on the side there. Really just shows off a like a chin, the lips and a nose. We didn't want to go any shorter than that. I think that works well. Cute actually. And what we want to make sure we do is this is a, a separate element, so we actually don't want to disturb here and here. Um, so we're just going to very, very gently blend that shape in with the sides, and we do it this way. I like to stand to the side, I see where. That length is there, and then we're coming back into our fingers using a really tight angle, making sure that we don't touch the, those corners. If you're more comfortable to do it this way, you can actually stand in front, and you can see there, there's the length, this is the ends, you don't want to touch that, and we're just blending that in just so it's got a little bit of synergy there, so it's not a complete disconnection. Not that there would be anything wrong with that, but I think it just flows a little bit better if it's not disconnected. I find that standing um, at the back, it's just easier to get those angles when they're super tight as well, rather than cutting into, the, into your fingers. You'll be able to see it a little bit better there. So I'm just literally just taking that into there. So when that falls, we just got that little bit of texture. And we'll point cut that, put some shape in the back and we're done. So this is a haircut that I do on many different lengths of hair at the salon. Um, it works really well with balayage techniques, ombre techniques, highlighting, even brunettes. It's super versatile, it grows out really well. It's quite um, easy to execute once you, you master it. Um, and your clients will love it because it's just a really cool haircut. A little bit of texture in the top here. This, if you have a look, I'll spin Matilda around, you'll be able to see this disconnection here. You see a disconnection in there. We just want to make sure that we blend that in just with a little bit of point cutting. Don't want to put any chatter marks or make it look classic and actually layer it. And that again is just more for the side here, so when the hair falls, you can see it sits in there really well. So that was easy. Let's see how that looks. That's the best. Perfect. Nice. All right. So we did a triangle in the front. So we're going to work with a triangle section in the back again. I'm just going to lift this um, camera up a little bit so you guys can see a bit better. So I really just want you guys to be able to see what's happening on the top of the head. So we're going to go from crown, which is generally when you comb the hair to the side, where it starts to part in there. You can see Matilda's crown's here. We're just going to go to behind the ear. Don't have to be super precious with this. It's 
Sorry if I make you dizzy, babes. It's easier than me walking around. And again, this is a, an editorial layering technique, which I like to use. So we're just going to start with a section in the middle, about an inch wide. And again, as we did in the front, we want to make sure that we don't take that bluntness out of the ends. So I'm going to spin this around this way so you guys can see the best. Because I'm right handed so it's easy for me to stand here. So you can see in the back here we've left the hair out. You can see that there's hair left out in the ends. Pop it down a bit too low now. And then the angle we want to work is like this. And we can't see so I have to push over here and do it up. Sorry babes. We just want to really make a point here. Yeah. And then the tricky part is it's easy for me because I've got big hands, but you need to do this all at once. and texturize it all at once. So you can see my guidelines in here. See you end up with a perfect point there. So you don't disrupt the shape, you don't want to go in sideways like that, chop into it. Super gentle. You guys can see that now. So the haircut's done, now we're going to bring Brooke in. Brooke, you want to come in? Yeah. Um, just give us a quick, quick overview of how you're going to style this and then we'll get started on that. So you can see that we've got a bit of shaping around the face, so we want to just flick it back off the face so we can help accentuate those cheekbones and around the jaw. Um, and just do a bit of a soft, soft wave, have a bit of texture, show that haircut off. Awesome. Fall, fall, 
Till I die Darling Will you fall If I fall Will you heal All my scars Watch me bleed Until I die Last section, huh? Oh, I think we've got one. Yep, two more to go. It's looking really good. Yeah. But you're right, it's made, really made your colour pop. I think yeah, you'd probably get away with like just stretching your root a little bit and yeah. that'd be that'd be perfect. I'll pass it around for you. Because we're filming so far from the mirror, because of the ratio of the camera, the cords on these are really long. Um, but because um, we're you know so far back, so you guys can get a good view, it's um, a little bit awkward with the cables, the cords. Gonna give it a little bit of breakup. I'm gonna use a bit of the height riser from Matrix. Um, my biggest philosophy in curls um, is giving it texture. Um, I'm a big believer if there's no texture in the hair, there's no life. So I just take a little bit of a section. Just spin around so I can see you. So I just like to go a little bit near the root, give it a bit of a shake and a bit of a puff. It's like my favorite product at the moment, height riser. Every single person who comes and has a header. I call it like a powdered teasing. Like it, um, it gives you that, 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 that sort of um, puff in the root, texture through the ends without having to do backcombing and all those classic things that you know, can potentially damage the hair. And I think texture is really important when you're doing waves here, bro. Definitely. Yeah. You want to see that movement, especially because you put those beautiful layers in there. You want to be able to show that off. Close your eyes when that comes around the front of the table. I don't think it would hurt you, but probably wouldn't feel very comfortable. <laughs> so you can use your fingers if you want to, or you can just use your brush. We'll answer those questions after. <laughs> Super cool. You have a good iron as well, you're able to break it up quite a bit yep. and not worry about it falling out. I like the shape you created in the front, it's nice. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the smooth setter by Matrix as well. I've been watching Adam do this for the last couple of days. Yep, it's um, something that's used generally only for wet to dry, um, but I love using it to settle down the flyaway, and I think that's that's really cool. It's really nice. Done a good job. Made my hair look good. <laughs> Pieces. It's pretty, pretty impossible for me to <laughs> not to look good. Exactly. The spin Tuck around so we can see the back. Beautiful. Nice soft wave. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming to hang out, Brooke. Thank you for having me. That was nice.
Um, so if you'd like to come and hang out with me and do a video, uh, leave a comment in the section. We'll try and make it happen. Matilda, thanks for your time. Thanks Happy with the haircut? Hair. Yes, it I looks good. It. I, I really like the length. I think yeah, collarbones used really good. Nice. I really love the way you styled it. Um, all the things we use, you can um, find on my website. Don't forget to go and follow Brooke on Instagram. What was your Instagram? Uh, Brooklyn J Hair. Um, I'll put it in a little thing. It'll be like down here. It'll scroll about now. <laughs> um, and make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification button and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Until next time, until thank you. Thank Talk you. Thanks. Thank you so much. See you guys. <laughs> Bye.